Coming up on Cabarrus This Week, we sat down with longtime director and CEO of the Cabarrus Arts Council, who will pass the torch at the end of the year. And new images from the historic Stonewall Jackson Training School. We'll take you inside. Plus, Pam Ooten is back with another awesome recipe that's all right now on Cabarrus This Week. Welcome to Cabarrus This Week, I'm Jared Glass. The Cabarrus Arts Council has announced longtime president and CEO Noel Rhodes Scott will retire later this year. Noel dedicated more than two decades to supporting the local arts movement, transforming the formerly all-volunteer council to become the vibrant organization it is today. During her tenure, the Arts Council established the Davis Theater and the galleries, both located in the historic Cabarrus Courthouse, creating a cultural center for the art and entertainment in downtown Concord. We sat down with Noelle to discuss that journey and the impact of arts on our community. I am Noelle Rhodes Scott. I am the president and CEO of the Cabarrus Arts Council. I was hired in 2000, um, September 15, 2000. And what we decided as a board and staff was that in order to get a community that did not seem to have a lot of interest in the arts, there was very, very, very little going on here in the arts. There was not a real gallery here. And so, and nobody was screaming foul, you know, we need something. So we decided to start with the schools. And that's when students take part in the arts started. I met with every principal and both superintendents to determine what did we want this to look like. And that's when we decided to do something very different from most communities and that we would leave no child behind and every single student in Cabarrus County and Kannapolis City Schools would get a professional performing arts experience every single year. And then the community started to get interested. We were doing it for the children in the community and then the result of that was by the time we were invited to move into this beautiful building by the county, I was getting regular phone calls from people in the community, parents and people who were hearing about the performances that the children were seeing going, when can, when can we come see this? When can our other children come see this? But by the time we moved in here we thought, okay, I think we can sell some tickets once we have a theater. The county, they had beautifully restored this building and it stayed closed most of the time to the community. Eventually, I got the call that said, would you all be interested in moving into the historic courthouse? So they allowed us to raise money to turn these beautiful rooms into beautiful gallery space and to turn the former courtroom into a 230-seat state-of-the-art theater. And the money raised was the easiest money I've ever raised in my life because people were so excited about it. So we raised more than we needed for those two floors, so we bumped it up to the old attic and created green room, dressing rooms, and another office space. The first breakfast for the arts, that was our first fundraiser. We very intentionally chose not to have a gala, which had been, arts councils had been famous for their galas early on, but it, it, it excludes so many people. We wanted this arts council from, from my beginning here to be obviously for everybody. So our very first breakfast for the arts was in 2001. Nobody even knew what an arts council was or that there was one here. Fast forward to the last one we were able to have in 2019, only because of COVID we haven't had it since. And we had over 800 people, and then at the end of it, we asked people to support. And people support how much they can. So fast forward, and we realized that in about 2008 or so, we really needed bigger donations. And we thought, okay, we can do something that we have a pretty hefty ticket price for. And so we decided to do dancing for the arts. And we asked stars 
in our own community, you know, whether it's Scott Padgett, Bill Dush, people from all across the county. It is a fabulous show. We can't wait to do that again. It's very bittersweet to leave, as you might imagine. I'm gonna miss so much about it. I'm gonna miss the people. I love, I love my team. Oh my goodness. Um, we work hard and we laugh hard and I just love every one of them so much. But I really want to go out on um, a high point. I want to go out while my husband and I still have lots of energy for kayaking, for hiking, for being a consumer of the arts. I will still be involved not only in the arts but also in things that really promote um, equality, that promote people treating everyone like human beings, for loving our neighbor as ourselves. So um, I, I think I will not be at a lack for things to do, um, but I don't have enough time or energy right now to wrap my mind around a plan. I'm sort of looking forward to not having a plan. Thanks, Noel, and congrats on your upcoming retirement. The Cabarrus Arts Council is conducting a nationwide search to find Noel's replacement and hope to name a successor by January 1st. Now you may remember a few weeks back we brought you information about the new work underway at the historic Stonewall Jackson Training School site. Redevelopment efforts continue with structure assessments and other preliminary studies underway. During that time we've documented the area in its current state. Here's a look at some of the interesting sites on the grounds. The building assessments will continue and we're collecting all the relevant information at cabarruscounty.us. Finally this week, we have another delicious recipe from our good friend Pam Ooten. I have to say, this was probably my favorite dish she has prepared for her show, Pam's Kitchen. Take a look. To begin, we're going to start with two cups of chopped cooked chicken. I'm going to add one cup of diced celery. All right, I'm going to add um, one half cup of sliced almonds. Don't you just love almonds? Adds a crunch to it. I will add two tablespoons of lemon juice. I like what this does. It gives it a little bit of tang. I'll add a half a cup of chicken broth and two teaspoons of grated onion. And the last thing we'll add, uh, the last main thing we'll add, will be a cup of mayonnaise. And this is what makes it so delicious, but it's probably making it a little bit um, less healthy than some of the other recipes we've done. To that, we're gonna add about uh, a half teaspoon of salt. So let's get this chicken casserole mixed. Gonna add it now to a casserole dish, and I did pre-spray this, but um, lightly. Now I'm gonna add Ritz cracker crumbs, and these are three-fourths cup of cracker crumbs. And now the thing we all love, 
shredded cheddar cheese. We're now ready to bake this in an oven at 400 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes. After you've finished, be sure to add some parsley to this recipe. This certainly brightens it up and adds an attractive garnish. I hope you will enjoy Pam's chicken casserole as many others have done. Thanks, Pam. If you want to learn from the master, Pam's hosting a cooking class to introduce you to the Mediterranean diet. The classes are every Thursday beginning September 30th. Register by September 27th by visiting cabarrascounty.us slash register. Now before we go, we want to remind you about ways to limit the spread of COVID-19. Halloween is just around the corner, and if you want to make sure you're fully vaccinated before then, schedule your appointment now at takemyshot.nc.gov. Remember to follow at Cabarrus Health on social media to receive updates on local case counts and evidence-based answers to your questions about COVID-19. As always, you can find more stories and updates by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Cabarrus County or subscribing to our weekly newsletter. Just visit cabarruscounty.us and type newsletter into the search bar. And don't forget that you can watch all of our other programming on demand at youtube.com slash County. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get all of our updates. Thanks for watching and have a great week.